What's up everybody and welcome to another video. This time I'm going to be unboxing what I hope is the perfect vlogging lens for crop frame sensors. It's right here in this box from B&H and we are gonna unbox it right now. My name is Anthony and if you're new to the channel I do videos about photography and videography and also vlogging stuff so this lens is actually really important for me it's gonna hopefully replace the lens that I've been using the lens that I've been using is a great lens but it's a little bit too shallow for me it's not wide enough to get that really nice width that you really want when you're doing a vlog style video because when you're doing a vlog you want to give the viewer the sense that you see everything that's around not like this video right here where it's kind of a tighter shot you've got the chest and then cut off up up here just above the head that's not what you're going for in a vlog style if you're going for a vlog you want it to look more like that so you see your surroundings you want to be able to tell that I've got this overhead camera set up you want to see kind of like that light way over in the corner you want to see the microphone up here but when you're doing a talking head video you can you can kind of punch in a little bit the lens that's in the box is a Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter f 2.8 now this is the new version that just got released late 2019 so it's not the older version the older version was plagued with issues like weird color fringing on the edges that's supposed to be fixed also this one all the gears that make it zoom in and zoom out all of those gears are internal which makes it great for putting on a gimbal let's jump in box looks pretty beat up I'm not sure if that happened while it was FedExed over here or if it's like that from sitting at B&H for a while all right, inside the box, we've got a certificate of warranty. We'll fill that out and send it in, put it to the side for now. Let's open her up. So that lens cap just came right off there. It was not attached. So be careful when you're opening it up. This lens cap may or may not be attached there. Oh man, this feels really good. Solid focus ring feels really nice to turn. Same with the zoom, moves really smoothly. Apparently with this, you put it in autofocus with the ring up and manual with it down. So, oh yeah, okay. That makes total sense. This lens hood is the same lens hood on the older Takina. And let's see if we can get that off. There we go. If we do a rough calculation on a 1.6 times crop lens, we're looking at a 17.6 millimeter equivalent to a full frame camera. Now let's read off some specs here. This one in particular is an EF mount, it's an APS-C format lens. It is a 17.6 to 25.6 millimeter equivalent. The aperture range on it is f2.8, that's an f2.8 throughout the entire zoom range on this. It's got two aspherical elements, two SD low depression elements, multi-coated elements, one touch focus clutch mechanism, one touch focus clutch. That's kind of a tongue twister. Internal focusing design and a nine blade diaphragm rather than a seven or eight blade diaphragm. So that means the bokeh on this, if you can get any, because it's so wide, I'm not sure that we'll actually be able to notice the bokeh unless we're focusing on something super close to the lens but the bokeh when you get it should look really really good oh and the reason that i got this some of you guys have probably seen that my go-to vlogging lens has been a 17 to 50 millimeter sigma lens it's got a 77 millimeter thread diameter and this one also has a 77 millimeter thread diameter so all of the indie filters that i've purchased for the sigma will also fit on this i'm just hoping that the wideness of this lens doesn't cause any more vignetting with those filters what do you say we put this on the camera and uh do some test shots i 
I'm here at Fishbone Alley in downtown Gulfport. It's a great little spot. If you haven't been here, you gotta check it out. A lot of great local art by uh, local artists that are just muraled all over the place that I'm gonna be taking some photos on on this lens. I've got the Takina 11 to 16 on the camera right now with my KNF Concept ND filter. And right now I'm looking on my little screen over here to the side and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of extra vignetting going on on the edges or anything. Uh, so far I'm really impressed with this lens and with the ND filter. So let's take this and actually do some photography with it and see if we can see if there's any color fringing or anything like that happening. So I'm here, I've set up my camera and I'm on 1 1,000th shutter speed and this is wide open at f2.8. Let's stop down to 5.6. 1 250th of a second on the shutter speed. We have 8, 125 frames per second. Um, frames per second, shutter speed. Moving to F11, 1 over 60, shutter speed. Moving to 16 on the F-stop, brings us down to 30 on the shutter speed. Finally, F22, 15 on the shutter speed. So actually what I'm gonna do there is set up a timer because I don't want any shake to get in to this shot. So I'm gonna set up that timer, hit it two second timer and you should click right there. We'll take those back in the studio and see if there's any color fringing in the corners or anything. It should be pretty sharp in the middle uh, just from what I've seen on this small screen and the little bit of footage that I put on my computer. The lens seems pretty sharp, but let's take it back to the studio and see what that looks like. But before we do that, right now you can see I've got this set up on a gimbal and it's my Sigma 17 to 50 millimeter lens. But the thing is, in order to get my field of view the way that I want it to, I have to extend it way out, way out like that. And um, you can probably tell with the microphone that this, the audio sucks because the mic has to be so far away. Plus, I look ridiculous holding this thing way out here like this. It's a good thing that um, we're social distancing. There's not a lot of people out here right now to see me vlogging in this ridiculous way. Um, so let me switch the microphone back over to my Canon 80D. Now I've got my field of view back to the way I like it. You can probably tell just by looking that I can hold my camera a lot closer. I don't have to have that gimbal set up to where it extends way farther than where my arm could reach. The bokeh on this thing is actually pretty good. Like way behind me, I can see on this little screen, it's actually pretty blurry back there and the bokeh looks pretty nice. Now in the sky, I can see a little bit of vignetting going on, I think because of the ND filter, but it's not terrible. Uh, I can live with that. So. Since I've got this out here and I brought my gimbal, since I brought all this stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and get some B-roll before I head back to the office and look at the photos we just took. We are back in the studio and we're gonna go ahead and start with the first image that we shot at f2.8. Starting with the overall look of it. It looks pretty sharp from here. Let's zoom into the middle. So you can tell with the letters up there at the top left that it's a little bit soft. It's not super soft, it's actually very sharp for a lens like this, a wide angle, but it is a little bit soft on the edges on the lettering there. So let's zoom in to 300% and see what happens. As expected, it is super crisp and sharp in the middle. Let's move a little bit out to where we saw that lettering. And you can tell here that we are already starting to see a little bit more softness. This is something that you have to look out for with wide angle lenses because when you've got a flat object that you're taking a photo of, the things in the corners are going to be a little bit further away from the lens, meaning it's outside of the focal plane. And here at f2.8, uh, everything from this point on is just going to look a little bit more blurry. Let's check out the corners and um, this is where we have to watch out for color fringing. The older model Takina 11-16mm to had some serious problems here, so let's check it out. 
f2.8 should be the most troublesome spot for color fringing and if you look at the blues i don't really see any color fringing in the blue area but if you go and look at the yellow part of the brick i do see some magenta fringing going on to the left of the yellow and it continues on through the black bars as well this is actually very good it's an excellent representation of lack of color fringing i'm super impressed with this lens right now if f 2.8 is the worst then it can only get better from here we are now at f 5.6 and 1 250th of a second to make up for the light drop off let's zoom into the middle and right away you can tell that the lettering above that smiley face is much more crisp we'll zoom in to 300 percent and just to see if that lettering is actually cleaned up, let's move over there before we head to the corners. It is still a little bit soft, and I can't tell if it's because it's protruding from the wall or if it's actually a little soft. Let's head over to the corners and see what's going on there. In the corners, it looks like it has cleaned up as far as the blurriness. It is a little bit more sharp at f5.6 than it was at f2.8, but we're still seeing some color fringing. It looks like that color fringing has actually sharpened up and it's not as bad, but it is still very noticeable. Let's check out the shot we took at F8. We'll go ahead and zoom into 100%. Looks like the lettering is tack sharp at least at 100%. Let's zoom into 300 and look at the middle. Super crisp, loving it from here. Let's go over to that lettering and see what that looks like. Oh, that's tack sharp. Let's see what it looks like in the corners at F8. The fringing in the corners looks like it's just about disappeared at F8. This might be its optimal f-stop. Moving on to the shot we took at F11 and 1 over 60. It's much the same in the middle. If we zoom in to 300, you'll see that it's the same. So let's move up to the lettering and to the corners. Let's do the same thing at F16. Let's zoom in to 300% and to the lettering. Looks like it might be getting less sharp. F16 doesn't seem as sharp as F11. Let's move to the corners. The fringing is still gone, but again, it's a little bit less sharp than it was at F11. Here at F22, I put a timer on the shutter so that I didn't have to increase the ISO so that we didn't get persuaded by the graininess of anything above 100. Uh, so let's zoom in and see what that looks like. And over to the lettering and the corners. So in my opinion, the fringing looks like it's gone, but it's still less sharp than it was at 16, um, but it's still pretty sharp for F22 in my opinion. All right, what do you think about that lens? Let me know in the comments. Is it the vlogging lens for APS-C sensors? I'd love to know. I think I'm gonna be using it from now on for my vlogging lens setup. I still love the Sigma 17 to 50 millimeter. It has been a workhorse of a lens. And when I need to get to that 50 millimeter range, which is pretty much an 80 millimeter equivalent, then I will be definitely grabbing the Sigma lens, but this is gonna be my landscape photography lens. It'll be my interior home touring lens. Just makes everything look larger than life. And I can't wait to get out in the field and actually use this thing for some client videos, some photography landscape stuff, and maybe some projects for you guys here on YouTube coming up in the future. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and go ahead and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new video. If you really wanna help this channel out though, go ahead and watch one of the videos that just popped up on the screen. Watching one of those videos tells YouTube that I have videos worth watching and gives me a little bit more clout when it comes to the YouTube algorithm. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.